Hey guys, Solomon here. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be going over the center game, a pretty underrated opening for white that is also very easy to reach and very easy to play. I mean, in all honesty, after watching this video through a few times, if you're interested in continuing with the center game, um, it's pretty basic in terms of the concepts and the ideas that we're trying to get. Okay. At least as a building block. Okay. And on top of that, your opponent is not going to know what the heck is going on against the center game. No one ever studies against it because it is so rare. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Well, let's look at the opening. So we got this move of E4, E4 opening against E5, in which case we play the move of D4. Now your opponent here is probably thinking that you're trying to go into a Danish gambit, right? The whole idea here is that if black takes in the Danish gambit, we play this move of C3. But in this case, if we're continuing with the regular center game, we are capturing back with the queen, okay? Queen takes d4, this is what we're gonna be looking at today. And um, yeah, I mean, most of the time, black's just gonna play knight c6, okay? This has played the large majority of games. It makes sense, right? Just get a tempo against that queen. There's a lot of different moves here that, that we see online. I mean, queen c4, queen a4, queen d3, queen d1, etc. In my opinion, the best move is queen e3, both in terms of how it performs, right? If you look at the statistics and on top of that, the computer likes this move the most. So queen e3, this is actually considered the Paulson attack. And uh, okay, what's the idea here? Well, black needs to be careful. Okay, if they just expand in the center of the board, guess what? Our queen is aimed right at their king, right? So in that case, we can just capture that pawn. The, the knight's got a block if they want to th save their knight at least. Here we throw in another check. You got a block with the bishop, and um, in that case, we can just you know do something like drop back. If you play c6 here, I mean, that's just not going to fix everything for you because we just keep taking, and guess what? That knight is pinned to the king. As you all can see here, um, things can go south for black pretty quick. Okay, so we play queen e3. A move like f5, a move like d5, our queen is aimed towards that king so we can capture with the pawn while delivering a check. Okay, now... The best move here for black, or one of the best moves, is this idea of knight f6, just developing, right? I mean, that's what black should do. Black sees your queen running out, you know, queen d4, queen e3. They should just develop their pieces. Now, as white here, a very, in my opinion, common mistake is to play this move of knight c3. And the reason this is a mistake is because black gets very easy development with their dark scored bishop. They play bishop b4, and against this, you know, we could play a move like bishop d2 and castle queen side, but notice just how active this dark squared bishop is. Black can now castle the very next move if they want to. They can play d6. Black has a pretty easy game in terms of developing their pieces. So instead, what I'm going to recommend against knight f6 is playing bishop d2 first, okay? This is when move orders matter, all right? It's not all about just get these pieces in these spots, and once you get them there, you're good. No, it's about Okay, what order are we doing this? What order can I develop my pieces to their squares to prevent black from, you know, making their pieces the best that they can, right? How can I prevent their activity while making my own? In this case, bishop d2, where's black going to go here, right? All of a sudden, this bishop is having a hard decision to make. Um, the most popular move online is bishop e7. Um, a bishop d6 move actually isn't bad but i don't see that many human players going with this because it, it does block in the slice squared bishop c4 is obviously taken away and uh, and b4 is an option but if you do see that i mean we can just kick that you know bishop around and if you want to take okay we we take back with the knight and um, we're going to look to castle there pretty quickly so bishop d2 is the idea here making it awkward for black to move their bishop now you may be wondering okay what happens if black just wastes a move or something that's fine if they want to waste a turn go for it right but the idea here is to play bishop d2 we'll probably see a move like bishop e7 and now we play knight c3 okay so instead of playing this first and giving black an easy pin we play bishop d2 then the move of knight c3 and we go from here now i'm going to be showing you the three most popular moves on lead chess if you go to the online uh, database you're going to see three moves here from black that are very popular first off we got this move of castling kingside Against this, we're going to castle queenside now. If you like openings where you get to castle queenside quick, the center game might be for you. Now, the queen is no longer aimed towards the king, but it's still active. And on top of that, our rook is aimed towards the opponent's queen. And oftentimes, the, ne the very next move, we're going to play this move of bishop e1. Now, this may seem very weird, and um, I'm not going to lie, it is. Okay, It's, it's straight up, it, it's just not normal Okay, to, to bring your bishop to e1. How many times have I made an opening video and uh, recommended you play bishop e1 i don't know if i ever have so i guess today is the first day but all right bishop e1 what's the idea here okay well the idea 
first off, eventually this bishop might find a home on h4, okay, once we push to f4, but the main idea here is that our rook is aimed towards the opponent's queen. I mean, just talk about pressure here that black has to deal with. The very next move, we see something like bishop e6, let's expand. Notice all the space that we take up with our two pawns, right? We control half of the fifth rank. And, um, you know, often here we see a move like bishop g4, but in that case, okay, let's just develop, right? We can play a move like h3, take back with the queen. We're going to push with g4, at least think about it. And, um, I mean, just great space from white, right? I love this position. We're actually probably going to be attacking five of the eight squares on the fifth rank with a lot of potential pawn pushes on the way. And, um, yeah, white here with space, white here with a very clear and big advantage. Okay, so that kind of covers castle and kingside. Okay, we're castle and queenside, playing bishop e1, looking to play f4, and, um, and gain some activity there. Now, what happens if, if black here plays the move of d6? Well, our plan doesn't really change. Okay, we're playing this move of castle and queenside. We're playing bishop e1, and we're playing f4. I personally love this position for white. I would love to get this game, and you can get it all the time by playing the center game. Okay. Now notice here, by playing f4, in this case, we're actually threatening to trap the bishop on e6 because guess what? It has nowhere to go once we play f5. And um, okay, if a move like g6 preventing that pawn push from happening, let's play h3. All right? let's just eye up that g4 square for a couple reasons. I mean, first off, if we want to play g4, that's great. And secondly, I mean, the knight and the bishop can't really jump in there anymore, drive us crazy, even if they did, right? Like even going a couple moves back, if black, you know, tried to drive us crazy with a move like knight g4, in this case, we could play queen f3 or even queen e2 and um, basically kick this knight back to where it was whenever we want to. Okay, so that's a start. But on top of that, um, if we go back to this move f4, okay, we got g6. You know, we play h3. Um, let's say black castles queen side or something. Let's play knight f3. Just keep developing, right? That is the main thing that we got to do here. Keep developing our pieces. Keep making space and play solid, okay? We're not in a huge rush here. We're not trying to win the game right away. Just take space, develop your pieces, and eventually a tactical form. But don't worry. If you see this position and you're thinking, I don't know how to win this, that's okay. I don't either, right? Chess isn't about knowing how to win from the get-go. It's about knowing how to improve your pieces, how to activate your pieces while not allowing your opponent to activate theirs. We have this move of rook g8. And uh, okay, I mean, in one sense, if you look at black side, it's like, wow, they're really well developed. You know, white has all their pieces on the first rank. Guys, white's just way better here. Okay. Because we got this pressure directly against the queen. And we have amazing coverage on that d5 square, right? I mean, if, if, if black plays d5, I mean, this is just, it's going to be dangerous for them. And in fact, here we can play bishop b5 as white, pin that knight to the queen. And um, yeah, I'm just not seeing an easy answer here. If you see if you see something like d5, we can play knight e5 attacking the queen, right? I mean, why not? If you see d5, throw the knight in, we're attacking the queen. If you run away with the queen there, we take. If you take back, we take on a7. I mean, just notice how quickly we're threatening main one. Notice how quickly black's position is falling apart. And um, yeah, if we see a move like a6, let's keep the pressure, right? Let's keep the pressure, right? We don't need to take. This is good tension for us. There's some tension here, but it's in our favor because our bishop can do whatever the heck it wants. This knight and this queen cannot. And uh, yeah, I mean, if black here gets desperate and plays a pawn push, let's sack, right? Let's sack that knight, continue this pin. And, um, you know, if a move like king b7, just bring the knight in. This knight is in major trouble and it's not going to survive very long. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, great game there uh, for white. All right, so going back again. The whole idea, okay, if, if you see castling kingside or d6 first, either one, I, I think white gets a pretty good game there. Um, nearly winning if black makes one slip up, maybe even just completely winning it, depending on what they play. Again, we're castling and we're very quickly playing this move of bishop e1. Now, knight g4 might seem scary, right? It might seem like, oh my gosh, my queen's getting chased around. It's fine, right? We can, we can drop the queen back to a square like e2. And this knight's going to have to run back whenever we want it to with the move like h3. We have f4 on the way. You can't stop us from activating our pieces. You can't stop us from making space. But on the flip side, black here can't really make space with their pawn right in the center of the board. d5 is completely under our control. And uh, yeah, pretty nice game there for white. What should black play though, right? I mean, black plays this move, black plays this move all the time. What black should play is this move of d5 before we get in our castling queen side bishop e1 idea. They gotta do this before. This is probably, the. I mean, this is the hardest variation in this case for, for white to, to deal with. 
But okay, we just have an even game. I mean, we're fine. I mean, you can take back with the pawn or the knight first. It doesn't really matter, okay? In this case, it doesn't matter. Move orders do matter, guys, but in this case, it doesn't because we're just having a big old brawl, big old exchange there. We could play knight e2. Knight e2 is a key move here. And um, the idea is actually not to come to c3, but instead to play knight f4, okay? Knight f4. And a queen c5 is the computer move. Um, where else can the queen go? I mean, you can't go there, there. Um, queen e5 is also solid. Um, what I'm trying to say is that there's there's no square that this queen can go to where we're like in trouble. Okay, I mean, you know, if you go to f5 or something, you know, we can castle queen side. We could think about getting tempo on that queen. There's there's just nowhere for this queen to go where it's a huge threat. All right, so all I have to say against knight f4, the computer likes this move of queen c5. Now we could capture this queen. Um, that's an idea, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but I would say here, let's just castle, right? Let's just castle. If they want to take us, then great. Well, we'll you know, I mean, we can always capture back with our bishop and, um, yeah, if they develop their bishop to d7 here. Okay. I mean, you know, we can develop here with a move like bishop d3, or if you want to, there, there's nothing wrong with taking the queen. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we still have an even game here, play f3. And, uh, yeah, I don't think anyone looking at this position is probably thinking, oh my gosh, white is just crushing this or black's just crushing this. Honestly, we're just playing a game of chess now and, uh, the Queens are off. We got three minor pieces each and we're heading into the end game. Okay. But all that to say, I mean, that's a pretty precise play from black there. Okay. To play this move of D five. If you see a move like D six and castling King side, or even just D six and black, just kind of developing from there. Notice the space advantage that we have, especially after we castle queen side, drop that Bishop back, play F four. E5 ideas are in the air. F5 ideas, in fact, right now we're threatening F5, trapping that bishop. And um, we're going to make a ton of space. And, um, you know, these bishops as well. I mean, these bishops in this kind of position, they actually both have a lot of, of great potential squares, okay, that they can go to um, depending on what happens. Okay, so, uh, okay. And by the way, I don't want to hear in the comment section, wait, why'd you highlight C4, the bishops? Uh, I know, guys. Okay, I know. I know the bishop's attacking that. I'm talking about potentiality, okay? When we're playing chess, we don't just got to think about current activity. We got to think about potential activity. And both of these bishops are in prime spots to jump into an active spot um, literally whenever they want to. And white here with great space, easy development, and the most important thing, a great grip on d5. And black's own, the only central pawn that black has is, is d6. Okay, they don't have any pawn anymore, Okay. They don't have an e-pawn anymore. So their only central pawn that they have is d6. And uh, right now we have a great clamp down on that square. Okay. Not to mention the rook looking directly at the opponent's queen. Now, I do want to mention something. Okay. If you play d4, they don't have to take. Now, most of the time they will, but they but they don't have to. Okay. Um, I do want to say if knight c6, uh, this actually transposes into the Nimzowich defense, the Kennedy variation. And I actually like to play this as black. Um, you know, it follows e4, knight c6, uh, d4, and then e5. Now, I'm going to recommend, it's up to you. I'm going to recommend you don't play D5 because um, black there actually gets a really nice game. In my opinion, I love that game for black. Um, if you, if you're interested in, you know, checking out my Nimza, Wish defense video uh, on the Kennedy variation, um, I'll leave a link to that down below. But all that to say, I mean, this is, um, this can be tough. If your opponent knows what they're doing, I would just say, just play chill, just play calm. You don't got to do anything crazy. Just take the pawn. Um, if they play D6, you could take, but I would, you know, if you want to, you can just play knight f3. You're fine. You don't have to take the gambit, right? Take the first pawn. Don't take the second. That's what they say. Um, but if you do take the pawn, you're not losing. It, it just can get very dangerous, okay? So if they do offer up a second pawn, I would probably just develop if I were you. Um, and if knight takes, okay, just we can develop, right? We don't got to go crazy here. Just develop your pieces. If they take, capture back with the queen, you know, move the bishop, castle, king side. The knight's going to get thrown out. We're playing chess, right? Nothing to worry about. Um, I also want to mention this move of d6. You might see this from time to time. And, uh, you know, some may jump to just take that pawn and capture off the queen. And white's fine here. The, white's okay. I mean, I would say that white has the advantage here, but it's not as big as you might think. Now, I know all the time on the channel I talk about how their king can't castle and our king can. But in this situation, none of our back rank pieces have developed. And we just don't have the development or the timing right now to really go after that king. Okay, we still have a lot of pieces that we got to develop. So if we play a move like bishop c4, the king could just run right back. If we develop the knight out, black could develop, um, you know, black here with, with a lot of moves that they could play, right? A lot of moves that they could play to just kind of activate their pieces. And I'm not seeing a clear win here, a clear way to, you know, make a big game out of this for white. But again, 
openings aren't about knowing how to win right out the opening. They're about getting a position that you like to work with. So if you like this position, go for it. If it kind of bores you to death, then don't do it. Right. So that, that's the thought. If that does bore you, if you don't like taking and then just trading off the queens and then kind of just having a position where we're developing pieces, but there's no queens and we're probably just going to trade a lot here, you can play the move of knight f3 okay and, and now you have black playing a philidor if you played e4 e5 knight f3 would black have played a philidor defense probably not so you're getting them out of their comfort zone a lot of players don't like the move of d6 because this bishop ends up being a little bit tied down and um, there's a lot of ways you can approach this i mean if they take you capture back with the knight um let's say we play knight c3 you can play quiet here you can play calm chess bishop e2 castling king side maybe look at f4 at some point bishop f3 whatever you know you can just play calm here or you can play a little bit crazy right i mean look to bring out the bishop bring out the queen castle queen side here make a big imbalance in this game um but at the end of the day i think we have a nice space advantage with our centralized e pawn uh controlling light squares like d5 and f5 and um yeah we're just playing chess let me know down below what you think and thought of the center game and let me know as well, like, is black. Like, if you're playing E5, do you ever see the center, center game? I, I I don't even remember the last time I saw someone play it. And it's kind of surprising to me because there is some gold in the opening. Like, there really is some some hidden gems in in these lines of variations, particularly that Bishop E1, you know, Castle Queenside, Bishop E1, F4 ID. I mean, white has a really nice position there. Um, but I just haven't seen it played in a long time. That said, I don't play E5 as black. So, I mean, I have played it, but I don't I don't play it consistently, right? I, I play the hippo. I Y'all know me. I play the hippo, but um, online I play different stuff. But I, I tend to play the hippo, the Owens, sometimes I this the St. George, the Carl Kahn, the Scandinavian. I, I try a lot of different stuff out of the Alakines, but I just haven't played E5 a ton to this point. So, uh, anyways, let me know how common or rare it is. And if it is rare that just adds to its strength, right? If something is not played a lot, your opponents are not gonna be prepared for it. You're gonna have the advantage in preparation. And every single time you do play it, make sure you learn a lesson, right? If you decide to play the center game or whatever opening it is, make sure every single time you play the opening, you come away with a lesson, right? Okay, I need to work on this. Even if you win, I need to work on this. Oh, this is interesting. Wait, what if they played that? I don't know what to do. Let's plug in the Stockfish, let's see. And um, eventually it's gonna be your 200th game playing the center game and your opponent is not even gonna know what the heck it is. So. That's going to be a big advantage to you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of January in 2023. If you haven't thought about becoming a member yet, I highly encourage you to think about it. You get some exclusive benefits by becoming a member and joining the family. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a bit of fun. We're growing a base here and I hope to see you there.